You ask for it, and now you're going to get it. The mysterious 35 Remington on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Thirty-five Remington. What is it? Why is it? Why is it so revered? Why is it so hard to find now? Why is it almost obsolete? Well, there's a lot of good reasons. Primarily, it's a fairly small cartridge. Born in 1906 for the 19 Model 08. Remington called it the Remington Model 8. Browning designed auto-loading rifle that took magazines holding as many as 15 rounds. Famous Texas Ranger Frank Hamer reportedly used this, taking down Bonnie and Clyde. It's famous. So why is the 35 Remington so beloved today? Because it's proven to be an excellent woods cartridge, especially for whitetail. That's where it made its reputation. Not only was it chambered in the Model 8 auto-loading rifle, then it was also chambered in a pump-action rifle from Remington, a lever-action Marlin 336, which everybody loves, and several other rounds, including the Model 600 bolt action rifle from Remington. I think for a time they put it in the Model 700 from Remington. Reports are that Winchester even chambered it in the Model 70 for a while. I haven't been able to confirm that. If anybody knows it, let us know. And then there were several other, but it was a fairly popular cartridge for the first part of the 20th century. And then after World War II, it started to fade away. Why? Well, because it had too much competition from newer cartridges, many of which were as good as, if not better than, and primarily the old competition, 3030. That's the one that's always been up against. What we want to find out is how much better this one is than the 3030. As you can see by looking closely, there's not a lot of size difference in that powder capacity. Of course, the bullets are different. 308 diameter bullet versus 0.358 diameter. Speaking of 3.58 diameter bullets, does this give you an idea? Yeah, you can load revolver pistol bullets from the 357 Magnum onto the 350. Tiny bit different at 0.357, but they will work and they're great for plinking. But you can also get the big bullets. This guy made its reputation with a 200 grain bullet. That was the favorite, but you can find them down to as light as 150 grains and as heavy as 220 grains. Some of the other cartridges competing against the 35 Remington with a 32 Special from Winchester. If you look closely, that doesn't look a heck of a lot different from that 3030, does it? No, I think it's just the 3030 necked up to 32 caliber. But there was another one, came later, the 356 Winchester. And as you can see, boy, those are awfully close. But the 356 Winchester is a lot more powerful. And the real powerhouse came out quite a bit later that's the 358 winchester you don't hear much about the 358 winchester anymore it's simply the 308 necked up to take a 35 caliber bullet we'll do some ballistics and see just how all of these compare and compete and one of the big ones we're going to compare it to today is the 350 legend now you can see that one looks quite a bit smaller in the powder capacity but you'll be surprised at how well it performs let's go to the tail of the tape we're going to compare the traditional round nose bullet that was the common bullet in 200 grains on the 35. It also came with a few fairly sharply tipped bullets, but you have to be careful with those, not use them in the tubular magazines. We're going to compare them against some sharply tipped bullets from the 350 Legend. That's going to give it an advantage, but we're going to go with the traditional round nose bullets in a 3030. And we've got a sharply tipped bullet in a 358 because that's a big part of the reason that's so powerful and so effective downrange. It has a higher ballistics coefficient. So let's go to the tail of the tape. 35 Remington, 200 grain round nose bullet. The ballistics coefficient on that's about 0.195. The muzzle velocity 2,100 feet per second. It generates 1,959 foot pounds of energy and it has a sectional density of 0.223. And you compare that guy with the 3030 Winchester, 170 grain round nose bullet. BC is a little higher at 203. The muzzle velocity is the same at 2100. The muzzle energy is a little bit less at 1665 foot pounds in the maximum point blank range, and it's 178 compared to the maximum point blank range of 175. Let's call that a tie. And if you look at the drop and drift charts, you'll see that they're awfully darn close. At 100 yards, gee, just about the same. Little bit less drop and wind deflection out of the 3030. 
uh, at 150 yards, the advantage starts to go to the 30-30 on the ballistic trajectory, but the energy still stays in favor of the 35 Remington. It was just a big part of the reason the old school hunters who loved it still love it. At 200 yards, though, boy, the 30-30 has taken over 885 foot-pounds of energy compared to 867. That is the result of the higher ballistics coefficient. Even though the uh, 35 Remington bullet is 30 grains heavier, it's losing out at longer ranges. But it doesn't matter all that much because both of these are medium range cartridges at most 150 yards yeah you can do it at 200 but boy they're running out of gas with only 850 so foot pounds of energy left in them so they're 150 uh, 175 yard cartridges as i said white tails in the woods black bears quite effective on elk as well but now let's slide into the 21st century with that 350 legend and see what that one will do that one we're going to throw 180 grain bullet in it's got a bc of 0.245 because of the nice sharp tip on it once again our muzzle velocity is the same at 2100 the energy is a little bit in between the first two at 1763 foot pounds of energy the uh, sectional density is 201 a little bit less than both of the older cartridges and the maximum point blank range is about 10 yards farther and you look at your numbers and they're not a heck of a lot difference except for the energy number at 200 yards that 350 legend even carries more energy than the 3030 so that i think will surprise a lot of people uh, but at 150 yards they're all over a thousand foot pounds of energy and that's really more than enough for deer now let's go to the big threat <laughs> 358. As I said, that's a 308 Winchester, and that one can take a bigger bullet and drive it a lot faster. We're going to stick with a 200 grain bullet on this one, matching up with the 35 Remington. But this one has a BC of 0.282, and that's going to make a huge difference. So with the muzzle velocity of 2,700 feet per second. So our energy is way up there. 3,238 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. The uh, sectional density is high at 0.223, but not as high as 170 grain round nose in that 30-30, surprisingly. And the maximum point-blank range on this one goes all the way out to 236 yards. And when I say maximum point-blank range, I'm thinking of a 5-inch target. Target. because a lot of guys shooting at these close range woods things want a bullet that doesn't rise too much in case they have to shoot through a hole in the branches so this thing will go no higher than two and a half inches above your sighting plane and that happens at 100 yards on almost all of them right in there so look at the energy downrange out of that 358 winchester at 150 yards is 2,233 foot-pounds, and at 200 yards, you still have almost 2,000 foot-pounds of energy. And the drops and the drifts, you're beating everybody. Why so much difference in a cartridge that doesn't look like it holds much less or more powder than does the 35 Remington? Maximum average chamber pressure. The SAMI spec on this old 35 is only 33,000 500 psi <laughs> and this guy's probably up closer to 60 62,000 psi there's your big difference but getting back to the real world the reason that this is so beloved is a similar to one to the 3030 being beloved you can get it in those lever action woods rifles and people absolutely love those and there's always been an argument about which one of these two knocks down deer better and the 35 lovers will insist it's because of that larger diameter bullet. How much that makes a difference, I don't really know. I've never subscribed to it as a huge factor, but you've got to figure in the sectional densities as well. The higher the SD number, the deeper it should penetrate. And let's go back to those. The uh, sectional density was 223 on the 35 and 256 on the 3030. So how are you going to penetrate a little better with this one, all else being the same? meaning bullet construction and type. So, I don't know. The guys still say, even though the energies are awfully close on these two, that they like the 35 better. 
My take on it is if you want a modern rifle in a 35 to do that job, I think you'll do just fine with the 350 Legend. And if you hang in there, we're going to see what that new 360 Buckhammer from Remington can do in this little party. So <laughs> that's the story on the 35 Remington. Yeah, it's an oldie, but it's still a goodie. And I think it's coming back right now. Henry is chambering it in their side gate lever action rifle. And I've heard that Marlin might be coming out with it in their new upgraded 336 Marlin lever action rifle. So something to look forward to. Hey, and if you're a handgun shooter that's been chambered in barrels to fit the TC contender. And years and years ago, Remington came out with it in their handgun, the XP100. So there are a lot of options for shooting the 35, just not a lot of new ones <laughs> except for that Henry. So stay tuned and we'll see if that 35 Remington can get a new lease on life. This is Ron Spomer. Thanks for watching Hanarsen Shoot Straight.